of the most difficult things to do is find yourself in a storm. And while in that storm, it seems like everyone who you thought you could count on has, has walked away. Sometimes it seems like even God himself has forgotten about you. But in spite of that, to still be able to lift your hands and say, Lord, I trust you. You seem so far away. to me 10 years ago. Somebody's going through something right now, and the devil's trying to convince you that there's no way you can make it out, and he says you're not going to be able to get out of this situation, but I wish somebody would make the devil out of a lie right now and lift your hands and say, God, I will trust you. I don't know how you're going to do it. I don't know when you're going to show up, but God, I know you're going to do it. God, I know you're going to bring me out. Come on, that's you. Come on, lift your voice and say, I will. Oh, that's right. I'll trust you. Hallelujah. Oh God, I don't know when the pain's go in, but I know, God, you wouldn't put more on me than I can bear, so I trust you, in spite of what I see, in spite of what I'm going through, I trust you, God, you've never left me, I know you love me, that's why I trust you, come on, why you take it up, I had my heart broken, I made some mistakes, God, you still kept me, oh God, you're faithful, you see what I'm going through. You know my pain. I trust you. It's not easy for me, but I trust you. I know you're here with me. I'm not by myself. As long as I got you, Jesus, I can make it. I trust you. Yeah. You know by your side. I trust you. Oh, God, I just lost my job. But I got no bills and money, but oh, God, I will.
think that hit right where it needed to hit. God bless you. God bless you. You're tuning in to the Worship House Ministries. I am your boy, Pastor M.D. Walls. And whether you're watching on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Instagram, Twitter, regardless on you where you're watching TikTok, we are so grateful and blessed to have you here. And we're so happy that God has seen fit to give you another day, another chance. And we rejoice in the fact that you're able to get up and be able to tune in to this um, worship service. Amen. Amen. A little housekeeping things before we go on. We are prepping and getting ourselves together for our June, our fast in June. Uh, we start fasting June the 1st up until the 31st. Correct? June the 1st to the 31st, right? June the 1st to the June the 1st to the 30th. 30. June the 1st to the 30th. Amen. We are um, it is the same uh schemes that we have done. Uh, for the last like what four or five years, we have done it, um, and we have been so grateful that every time we fast and we be obedient to God, that He does things exceedingly and abundantly. So, to you, Worship House Ministry members, get ready because the fast is coming. Don't wait to the last minute to start getting your stuff together for the fast. That's when you find yourself in a situation where you're scrambling to see what you're going to have for dinner. What you're going to be able to, you know, make throughout the day, start getting your stuff together now, prepare a plan so that way you'll have no excuses when you drive by Wendy's and be like, ah, oh, I didn't get nothing with Wendy's. Yeah, get yourself together. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Also, we are yet and still praying with everybody that's in need of prayer. We are praying with you, with your lost ones and your loved ones. Um, we are always praying for people. Um, and we just, you know, we always with you. Our Bible class has been running um, Mondays and Wednesdays, Wednesdays being the primary day on which I teach uh, Bible class. And we have been going strong <clears throat> since we said we was going to do it. Um, and we are still in the book of Genesis and we're taking our time and we're referencing and we're going over material. So if you wish to join in, on Wednesdays at 7 p.m., I teach. And on Mondays, the following Mondays, Lady Deborah at 7 p.m., recap. We are getting more and more individuals to come in, and they are loving uh, what God is doing for us in this Bible class. Amen? Through us. Well, for us and through us in this Bible class. Opening our eyes for greater understanding. <clears throat> so, I'm not going to be before you long. God just gave me some simple things. I know I keep saying I'm not going to say that anymore, Lady Deborah, but we're just going to let God do what he do. Those of you have your Bible, turns with me to Proverbs 21. Proverbs 21, verse 31. I'm going to be reading from the Amplified Version of the Bible. Proverbs 21, verse 31, just for the sake of the scripture, for the sake of word. Proverbs 21, verse 31. Proverbs 21, verse 31. And upon your arrival, you'll find that it says, the horse is prepared for the day of battle, but deliverance and victory belong to the Lord. I want to talk to you a little bit this morning about I can't lose. I I, I can't lose. I, I know that I look a little bit battered, tattered down. I know my eyes might be puffy, but I, I can't lose. I I know I might not look the way that you think I should look. And I know that sometimes I got this smile on my face, but I'm just angry on the inside. But I want you to know I cannot lose. I know I look like I'm knocked down right now and I'm held down and I'm crying every night and I'm going through all these changes. And it seems like all type of hell is falling down on me, but I want you to know today that I stand strong in believing that I can not lose. <laughs> uh, let us pray. Dear Heavenly and Merciful Father, we come right now, Lord, just to say thank you. 
Lord, we ask him right now that you use me, oh God, so that they might see you and not me, oh God, that you strengthen the words that are coming out of our mouth, oh God, so that they might understand exactly what it is that you're delivering in this message today. Now is your time and now is your hour, oh God. We need you to show up and show out like only you can, oh God. These things we ask and pray for in your darling son, Jesus' name, amen. I I can't I can't lose, Lady Deborah. I I just can't lose. In today's time, things are different. And when I say that things are different, when I used to go outside, Lady Deborah, the only thing I used to have to worry about when I was going to school that if a gang fight would break out, and you know, not that fact that somebody would get shot, just a gang fight might break out, Lady Deborah, and that we might end up fighting and tussling on the street. But at least at the end of the day. Everybody gets a chance to go home, Lady Deborah. I mean, everybody might go home a little beaten, a little bruised, a little battered, and maybe their feelings are hurt, but at least they get to go home, Lady Deborah. But nowadays, when I step out the house, <clears throat> or even when I'm just sitting in the house, I'm hearing wars and rumors of wars. I'm, I'm fighting against so many different things. I see people that are talking about God, and, and I, I hear them and their words and their verbiage, and they just seem to be attacking me on every life right and left angle that's because i take the word of god personally lady deborah but i feel like sometimes that my words when i'm speaking my words that sometimes they fall on deaf ears lady deborah and i feel like that every time i go outside it's a whole pressure around me and then i'm still wondering if when i get to my destination will i be able to, to make it home i have so many things that i worry about lady deborah that it beats me down, but I don't worry too much, but I still worry. I know that we say if you're going to worry, then don't pray. But if you pray, you don't worry. But it only makes rightful sense for me to want to make it home. I, 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 I'm so afraid nowadays that these spirits that are on this earth and that are walking around this country today, they are becoming so bold and, and basin in their attack, Lady Deborah. They attack you on your job. They attack you in your home. They attack you in your love life, Lady Deborah. They will attack you at any given way. They will try to make you think what's right is wrong and what's wrong is right, Lady Deborah. They will try to get you to believe something that even though your natural eye can see it for exactly how it is, they will try to tell you that you crazy because of what you see and it's a constant fight it is a fight for position it is a fight for power it is a struggle on an everyday basis I don't know who said that a Christian life is easy Lady Deborah I don't know who said that once you follow Christ, you don't have nothing that you have to uh, stress about or think about. But I don't know one thing that I am a Christian and I go through struggles and stress on a daily basis that sometimes I feel like I just want to give up. But I know that giving up is not an option. In this fight and in this struggle that we're going through, you have to know whose side you're on. Which brings me to my first, first, first point. You have to choose a side. Joshua 24 and 15 says, and if if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You have to make a choice. You either going to choose the devil, or you're going to choose God. You have to, you can't sit in between. 
You can't play the mediator when it comes to your life. You have to choose a side. I know so many people want to just stay neutral, but I tell you that there is no joy or deliverance in being neutral. Jesus said, I'd rather you be lukewarm, I'd rather you be hot or cold, but instead you're lukewarm and I shall spit you out of my mouth. That's me, you sitting on the middle of something, and then sometimes you play whatever side leads to your greater need. Monkey in the middle. I, I know there's been times that I've had good friends, Lady Deborah. Good friends on both sides. And I was dead in the middle. And I knew one friend, Lady Deborah, was wrong. And I knew the other friend was right. But it seemed like that one that was wrong, Lady Deborah, was etching me to be on their side so much stronger as if if I was on their side, it would make them valid for what they had done. Oh, my God. That's how the enemy is. The enemy was sweetening the pot. They would brag you and bribe you in order for you to come over to their side to make it seem like what they're doing is right. This is why we get fantasized by Hollywood. Huh? This is why you got to take that, take that thing going on because what looks good ain't necessarily good for you. You have to choose this day whose side you are on. You can't sit on the devil throne and talking about you love Christ. Huh? So many people want to stay in the middle, middle, but there's nothing but trouble and complexity in the middle. I am not saying that when you choose God's side, it becomes easy because it don't. The moment you start choosing to serve God is when the enemy comes at you so hard just to pull you off track. But once you choose to serve Jesus, you have to then know the strategy. See, Jesus just don't get into a fight without a strategy. Huh? There is, the Bible says that he knows the plans he has for you. When we of the military go to war, we don't just go out all willy and nilly and guns flying and shooting and stuff like that. No, there is a strategy that is put in place by the higher ups. And us down, we get it, we get it filtered down to us and we have to follow the strategy. You have to know the strategy. Second Chronicles 20, 15 through 17 says, and he said, hearken ye all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem and thou king Jehoshaphat, thus said the Lord unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Zeus and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jerusalem. Now watch this. Verse 17 says, ye shall not need to fight this battle. Oh my God. Set yourself, stand ye still and the salvation of the Lord is with you, O Judah, O Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go up against them, for the Lord will be with you. You have to know the strategy. The enemy's main purpose is to get you to lose. He wants you to not trust in God. He wants the battle 
your faith. He want to do his best to prove that your faith is wrong. This is why the enemy is always attacking you. And you turn to your, you turn to God. You say, why me, God? Why not you? God said, stand still and know that I am God. A lot of people standing still and don't know God. They claim to be standing still, Lady Deborah, and knowing, but they don't know. Watch this. I, I, I wish I can demonstrate this, right? I, I don't know if I can do this just right, but I, I need you to watch this, right? If you can see this, just, 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 I wish I, I, I had, watch this, right? This is you. This is this this USB represents you. Wait, this hand represents you. This hand represents the enemy. All right, pay attention. I need you to pay attention. God says, "Go down and know that I am God and stand still." That means when you stand still, you're not afraid, even though you looking at the enemy. You see how big they are. You see all the weapons that they have. Even though you looking at them, you are standing still and not afraid of what it is that you see because you can't trust what you see. You have to trust what you believe, and you have to stand still on. God, that he will fight this battle for you. What happens is, is that those people that call themselves standing still, the moment the enemy start coming in, they move out the way. That's not trusting God. God said, stand still and know that I am God. So that way, when the enemy come in, God gets in between and he pushes the enemy back. Because you were able to stand still on the faith and the promise of God. It said, be not dismayed, for the battle is already yours. You fight the fight, but you got to stand still and know that victory is already yours. You cannot lose as long as you have faith in god huh a lot of us falter because we don't have enough faith we don't have enough faith that god is going to protect us lady deborah we don't we don't have enough faith that god is going to make a way out of no way lady deborah we don't have enough faith that we sing it all the time that he's a bridge over troubled water lady deborah but yet though know, when we walk across the bridge we look it down just to make sure that it don't begin to clap we don't have that type of faith lady deborah we sing it we pray it we say it but we don't have it a lot of pastors are preaching faith but they don't have it Let me move on. He said, you need not fight this battle. I, 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 I employ you today that you are fighting something that you need not to fight. You, 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 you trying to put your hands on it, but you can't put your hands on it when God has his hands on it. Huh? You you got to move out the way and just stand still and watch God work. If you're not understanding what we're talking about, we're not talking about physical warfare, Lady Deborah, but we're talking about spiritual warfare, Lady Deborah. So many of us are standing still in our home, but we don't have enough faith. That's why you got problems in your home. You're too busy trying to put your hands on it. But God says, take your hands off of it and stand strong and know that I am God. Yeah, know that I'm going to deliver you and your family and the generations after you if you just stand still. If you just be unmovable. Huh? Know that I'm going to lift up a standard around your life if you just stand still and be 
unmovable. You ain't got to worry about them devil and imps. I just need you to stand still and be unmovable. You ain't got to worry about your disrespectful children. You just need you to stand still and be unmovable. And when you see the enemy come, just start saying you plead the blood, you plead the blood, you plead the blood, and watch the blood begin to work. Uh, now, we, we know that we chose the Lord's side, Lady Deborah, and, and now we know the strategy. The last thing I need you to do is choose your weapon. Now, I, I want you to understand, God says, trust in him, stand still, stand still. But you still have to get ready for the fight. You have to choose your weapon. <laughs> you, you, what's funny is it was it, it was a, a game. I forgot what the name of the game was, Lady Devil. When you chose your character, it says choose your weapon. And, and, and when you when you chose your weapon, you would fight with your weapon and and you would if you just knew, skilled enough to move that joystick for, fast enough you definitely knew that you was gonna if you knew all the right combinations and up up down down left right x square you knew already lady devil that that was gonna be a mighty blow and you was gonna win that fight and then at the end of that fight it says finish him there we go mortal combat and that's how it is when you fighting a spiritual battle Huh? You've already chose God, but now you have to choose your weapon. Watch this. Ephesians 6, 11 through 18 says, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore ye take unto the whole arm of God, that ye may be able to stand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand again, therefore, having your loins girt up about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, protecting my chest, and you feel shot, and, and your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace, be able to walk by faith. Above all, take on the shield of faith, wherefore you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Therefore the weapons formed against me shall not prosper. Not saying they won't be formed, but they shall not prosper. And above all, taking on the shield of faith, and take the hell Helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Let this mind be within you, which is also in Christ, Christ Jesus. Be ye transformed, but not conformed by the root renewance of your mind. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. This is your weapon. The armor of God is your weapon. The word of God is your weapon. Praying and standing still and trusting God. These are your weapons. The Bible is your sword. You notice one thing. He didn't say nothing in the scripture about your back for the bible says surely grace and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life so i ain't gotta worry about nobody stabbing me in my back because god has my back not only if he got my back he also got my front I, all i have to do is look like i'm ready for the fight <laughs> Woo! you cannot lose if you was to follow these simple rules, this simple strategy, and these simple points, you cannot lose. Lady Deborah was talking to one of the members today, not today, a couple of days ago, and she gave her this vow. And, and it made me think, these little bitty mustard seeds. Now, Lady Deborah, here's the thing. This is a, complimation, a, a, a combination of multiple mustard seeds right in one of these so therefore it's a lot lady deborah 
It's a lot. But if you take one of these seeds out, the seed is so small that you have to pinch it in your hand to keep it from falling in between your fingers. The Bible says if you just have faith of a mustard seed, it don't require a whole lot. All it requires a little and a little will get you a lot. If you just have faith of a mustard seed. Uh -huh. Huh? If you have faith, then you already know that through Christ Jesus, you cannot lose. Huh? If you choose this day whom you will serve, which will be the Lord Christ Jesus, you cannot lose. If you follow the strategy, therefore go down and get ready for the fight, but stand still on the word of God, you cannot lose. If you choose your weapon, if you choose the armor of God, the sword, you will not lose if you have faith. And at the end of the day, that's exactly what it's about. It is faith that's going to get us through even in times like this. Faith without works is dead. What was the purpose of Jesus Christ dying on the cross for you if he was going to set you up to lose? Huh? When Jesus Christ died on that cross for us, he got victory for us. He became the sacrifice for us. And our faith is in not only that he died and he got victory, is that he rose with all power in his hand. And that is the power that allows us to stand still on the promises and the word of God, knowing that he will do exactly what he said and he cannot fail. And as long as I'm with him, I don't have to worry about nothing. <laughs> but always be ready for the fight, even though you cannot lose. If you have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your own personal Savior, now is the time and now is the hour for you to be able to understand exactly who it is that is fighting for you and has been there for you through all the days of your life. Otherwise, how would you still be where you are if it wasn't for him on your side? Because he's given you grace and mercy and another chance every day to get it right. Now is your day to get it right. And if you have not accepted the Lord as your own personal Savior, now is that time and now is the hour. If you just accept him and believe that he died on the cross for you, but rose again with all power in his hand. And, it, and you accept him as the one and only true son of the one and only true living God. And you can consider yourself saved. Amen. God bless you. I love you. Spring is here, Lady Deborah. Baptism. Somebody need to be baptized. I can't remember who it was, but somebody needed to be baptized. Okay, we need to find out who that was so that we can get down to the lake and we can baptize. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Maybe we can get our own pool. That that lake was pretty. You know. It was cool. It was cool. <laughs> God bless you. We love you, and we will see you all next week. Amen? Amen.